Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Paul Ajaba. I am the director of the Michigan Department of Transportation. Uh, I want to welcome you all uh, to this press conference. I am so happy to be here today and honored to introduce the U.S. Department of Transportation Secretary, Pete Buttigieg. The secretary did a yeoman's work to get President Bush's, I mean, President Biden's infrastructure, <laughs> President Biden's infrastructure bill passed. And it's called the Bipartisan Infrastructure Legislation. Uh, when Governor Whitman came into office in 2019, she promised that we're going to fix the roads and our infrastructure and in 20, January 2021, she gave him that $3.5 billion to go out there and fix the roads. Uh, part of the strategy at the time was to concentrate this $3.5 billion on fixing the most highly traveled roadways with economic impact, which means freeways. But with the bipartisan infrastructure legislation, the governor decided we're going to use this money to fix our main street in Michigan. And fixing Main Street roads includes utilities underneath those roadways, and it, it involves a lot of people. So uh, before I turn it over to Sandy to introduce uh, uh, Senator Stabenow, I just want to say thank you to the governor and to the secretary for being here for all their hard work in pushing infrastructure in the state of Michigan. With that, Sandy. All right. All right. Nice. Nice. Thank you, Paul. And just for the record, it is a Chamber of Commerce Day. <laughs> uh, Secretary Buttigieg, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here at the Mackinac Policy Conference uh, and come to Michigan, which I know is now a second home uh, for you and your family. So we're just delighted uh, to see you. Governor Whitmer, uh, thank you for extending the invitation to the Secretary. We have you to thank uh, for Secretary Buttigieg's appearance here today, and we're really, really appreciative of that. In today's polarized political environment, infrastructure is an area where bipartisan agreement is possible. And the best case in point, of course, is the infrastructure package that was successfully led by President Biden and Secretary Buttigieg. There is widespread acknowledgement on both sides of the aisle, regardless of your political ideology, that America's infrastructure is woefully inadequate for the challenges of tomorrow, above ground, in the air, below ground and over the air. Nations and regions that are investing in modern infrastructure are benefiting from higher rates of economic growth, modern and efficient roadways attract and retain residents, modern and efficient transportation retains business investment and jobs, and today's announcement that the governor is making to expedite the permitting process for these precious federal dollars that we have through the Infrastructure Act will just make Michigan more competitive. So Secretary Pete, thank you so much for helping Michigan and taking yet another step in making Michigan more competitive for the 21st century. Now it is my pleasure to turn the microphone over to U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow. Well, good afternoon. It is wonderful to be here. And I, I just have to point out, we are on an island with horses, and we're talking about all kinds of transportation on wheels. So we're, we are, uh, but we're excited to be here. It's great to uh, have worked together with colleagues in the House and Senate, my great House colleagues that are here, Congressman Kildee, Congresswoman Stevens, and a Congresswoman Lawrence, who we are not going to let retire. She thinks she is, but we are not going to let her. And, uh, and all of our colleagues that worked so closely together with President Biden and Secretary Buttigieg, and all of us who have a vision about rebuilding and moving Michigan and the country forward. So this is something that's been talked about for years but finally is getting done. And let me just briefly say, we are thrilled as a federal delegation to have helped bring in a 42% increase in federal funding to Michigan. For, so you can fix the damn roads, Governor. <laughs> so, 
And we have great confidence in doing that because our great governor's vision has been there every step of the way, doing what she can here in Michigan with resources and now with the federal resources that we have to add to that. We know that high-speed internet is finally viewed as infrastructure, which is a big deal for all of us, particularly when you're up on the island and you can see what happens in northern Michigan. But let me just mention a couple of other things. When we talk about the future, it is about electric vehicles, of which we want everybody buying a Michigan-made electric vehicle, and they're going to have to charge them. And there's very specific charging infrastructure that is in this bill that will allow us to have charging stations all over Michigan uh, to be able to move around Michigan. In addition to that, something not focused on a lot is there's about $8 billion to focus on batteries, both the raw materials, materials we need, as well as research, development, and so on for the great battery facilities that we want all the way here in Michigan as well. We are focused not on infrastructure, also on drinking water, largest investment in water infrastructure, including the largest single investment in the Great Lakes in terms of uh, investing in what we need to do to support our water. And finally, I would just say this. Uh, a lot of folks have talked for a long time about the fact that we ought to strengthen Buy American laws. And I'm very, very pleased that legislation of mine called Make It in America is now law as part of this bill. We have a permanent Made in America office. Uh, we're going to make sure that we are contracting with American workers and American businesses. And we are going to follow all the labor laws as well to make sure that we are talking about good paying jobs. And we're going to make sure that as we go forward, whether it's construction, materials or whether it's contracting uh, through the federal government that we are leveraging federal dollars for American jobs and we want those right here. So there's a lot of excitement around what this has to offer and so grateful to the coalition, both uh, the great work the governor is doing, the congressional delegation, our great county exec who is here with us, thank you, and Evans, and the cities and all of us working together. And by the way, the folks that are going to build this are great building trades. So thank you for the professional work that you do. So it's my pleasure now to turn it over to the guy who has, you know, we, we like to claim him. We know, we know he may not consider himself only a Michigander, but you <laughs> certainly are a Michigander as part of uh, this with your family. And um, Secretary Buttigieg has been an extraordinary leader and is somebody who is laser focused on where we need to go in Michigan, where we need to go nationally. We are so fortunate to have him in this position as a former mayor. He gets it on the front lines. And he is really laser focused that every dollar is going to go in the right place. We don't have any dollars to waste here. And he's the guy that's going to make sure that this is done effectively. Secretary, yeah. be, right. welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, uh, Senator, and uh, we've, I, I'm, I'm delighted to have been uh, welcomed by adoption into the, into the Michigan family. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, the members of, of the House who are here, uh, Representatives Kildee, Stevens, and, uh, and uh, Lawrence, as well as uh, those who uh, aren't here, standing here right now, but who, along with Senator Peters, uh, helped to deliver this historic infrastructure law. Uh, I want to thank uh, Director Ajiba. We are going to be keeping uh, the State Department's of Transportation very, very busy uh, because of this, this funding that's coming through. And uh, uh, that's as if the governor hadn't already been keeping you and your <laughs> colleagues busy. First time I, I spoke to the governor as uh, after I had gotten this appointment, she, uh, uh, she told me I had now become the secretary of fixing the damn roads. Uh, <laughs> she was doing it before it was cool, and now we are partnering together to make that happen. Uh, so we're, we're thrilled to, to work on that together. And I want to thank uh, Sandy Brew and, and the regional uh, chamber for, uh, uh, of course, bringing us here. And uh, Representative Dingle, how are you doing? Hey, yeah, <laughs> Alyssa, all right. We've got the better part of the delegation here now. Um, and uh, yeah, what a great place to talk about transportation. And 
uh, you know, whether you, I mean, the, from the ferry that brings you here to the bridge that you go by uh, to the uh, uh, lower tech but eternal forms of uh, uh, four-legged transportation that are here. Um, and knowing, of course, that some of the great uh, uh, industries, uh, great auto manufacturers in the world uh, are, are just a short drive away. Uh, this is uh, a perfect place to talk about what it means to drive economic growth and opportunity through good infrastructure investment. And let me tell you, for anybody who might mistakenly be thinking, why did we do all this as a state if the federal government was going to pass infrastructure legislation? Let me make very clear. States whose governors and, uh, and, and state transportations have been already running hard on infrastructure are the ones that will be best positioned to take advantage of the federal dollars that are now coming your way. And that's exactly the direction that the governor has led Michigan into. I've been all over the country uh, on the road as, as we've been investing to help countries, uh, to help communities across the country modernize their infrastructure. What we've seen is that roads and rail, transit and trains, ports and airports, not to mention internet, water pipes, and everything else that, that is part of our infrastructure has required major, major investment. Now, we've already announced almost $3 billion headed to Michigan since the president signed that law just over six months ago, and we're just getting started. And all this opportunity is here because of that landmark legislation, but we're not defining success based on the bill getting passed and signed or even based on the number of dollars that have gone out. Success is about delivering. Success is about making sure that people's lives are better and that they have the freedom to pursue the things that they believe in and need. Success means modern infrastructure that's creating jobs and improving local economies. And so I want to highlight some of the work that's underway in Michigan and at the federal level that I think is a model of how state and federal government can work together to make the most of every infrastructure dollar. First of all, starting the Fixing the Damn Roads and Bridges Department uh, in terms of how people can get around safely and reliably in their cars. In December, we provided the biggest federal highway funding to states in decades at $52.5 billion. In January, we allocated $27.5 billion to states to fix as many as 15,000 bridges across America over the next five years. And all of this is going to be faster and more efficient in those states that have decided to get a head start, like Michigan. In addition, we're modernizing freight rail and ports, investing heavily in the infrastructure beneath America's supply chains to help families get the goods that they need and as part of the fight against inflation, as well as, of course, as helping companies get their parts and export their products. And this is important for anyone from uh, whoever's uh, uh, involved in auto manufacturing in the state to all of us just buying groceries. And it's important for workers and businesses and communities of all sizes. About 95 miles from here is Alpena, where we recently awarded funding so that the port there can make improvements to bring in larger cargo ships. It increases the availability of goods through a port that supports hundreds of jobs at a cement plant nearby, as well as hundreds more across the state. Uh, we're funding improvements in Marquette. So I don't want people to think that our ports work is just about those big coastal container ports, as important as they are. The Great Lakes are a very big part of that story as well. And as we all know, auto manufacturers in Michigan who, who helped put this country on four wheels to begin with, today with union workers are building some of the best EVs in the world, including new pickup trucks that are going to bring the cost savings going electric to even more Americans. Now, we've launched our program as an administration to help build a network of over 500,000 EV chargers across the country by 2030 so that everybody, from people in our biggest cities to our most rural counties, can benefit from the savings that come with owning these vehicles, knowing that they'll find an, uh, an easy and convenient place to charge. And we're continuing to work for policies through Congress that will make EVs affordable to more people. Just imagining what it would mean if those pickup trucks that started in the 40s could be in the high 20s, which is possible uh, with that kind of uh, legislation. Like the governor, we believe in transportation connecting people. And I've got to say that in Detroit, as in a number of communities that I've been to, we have seen highways built generations ago straight through black communities that today disconnect people from friends and disconnect businesses from customers. We should be driving on boulevards that connect our communities or through tunnels above which sit new parks and new land on which small businesses are thriving thanks to the improved foot traffic that we've reconnected. So we are within weeks of opening applications for the first ever 
dedicated federal program to help reconnect communities that may have been divided by past federal investments and help people get to where they need to go safely, equitably, and quickly. And again, I want to thank the delegation of this state for helping us deliver that legislation. Last thing I want to mention uh, is the, what the governor is doing to help speed up permitting while remaining committed to the highest standards of safety and environmental protection. Uh, at the U.S. DOT and across our Biden-Harris administration, we're taking a similar approach. So Michigan's not waiting on the federal government, and the federal government is not waiting on anybody else. We are delivering quickly for the people that we serve together. And I see in that clear alignment between the, the state's work and ours, the opportunity to collaborate to support the projects that are going to have the most impact in making people better off. Uh, so with that, I want to again uh, thank everyone who has brought us to this point, uh, and I want to thank the governor for encouraging me to come to this uh, beautiful conference. You won't have to tell me twice after seeing it for myself. Uh, with that, I have the honor of turning it over to Governor Whitmer. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Secretary. You're awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm so pleased that Secretary Buttigieg could join us and um, we delivered a beautiful Michigan day. He'll come back because of it, I'm confident. Um, and he is a Michigander by adoption. And just test him. Ask him to pronounce some of our, our cities. He knows how to say Gaylord, not Gaylord. All right. So Secretary Buttigieg, I am so glad you're here in your adopted home state. From Michigander to Michigander, I'm grateful for your service to our nation, um, your service in uniform and now as a member of the president's cabinet. We are committed to working together to, as we work to address and rebuild our infrastructure, create good paying construction jobs, center the communities we serve. And today I'm going to be signing, or I actually have already signed an executive directive to get things done efficiently and effectively. I'm really proud of the work that we have done in Michigan. Those of you who drove up, you saw those orange barrels. I hope you slowed down and respected the men and women that put their own lives at risk to improve the quality of all of our lives and recognize that orange barrels are a sign of progress. Since I took office through the end of this year, we will have fixed over 16,000 lane miles, 1,200 bridges, and supported 89,000 jobs in the process. And this summer is gonna be our busiest construction season ever, thanks to resources from the Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which we have all of these incredible uh, Congress people to thank for that opportunity. And I wanna recognize that we were at work moving dirt, but we are gonna be able to do a heck of a lot more thanks to this huge investment that our, our congressional delegation here voted for. The Building Michigan Together plan uh, make some of the largest investments in infrastructure in Michigan history, and it's working in tandem with my Rebuilding Michigan Bond plan, which we went forward with in 2020. We are tackling huge projects on some of our busiest commercial corridors. To coordinate efforts across state Michigan, of the, the, across state government, I set up the Michigan Infrastructure Office and appointed Michigan's first Chief Infrastructure Officer, Zach Cloden, over here, get to know him, uh, to ensure that we make the most of this once in a generation opportunity to rebuild and to reimagine our infrastructure. His team will be con continue to grow and we will all be working together. Where is my director? Fix the damn roads director. Uh, we're gonna continue to work incredibly hard to make sure that we move forward the two most crucial elements in any construction project dirt and paperwork. We're going to move fast. So I want to highlight another set of exciting projects. The Michigan Department of Transportation is introducing the Michigan Main Streets strategy, which will focus on improving state roads or highways that run through town centers and commercial districts. The goal is to ensure that Michiganders can see and feel the positive impacts of investment in infrastructure on streets that matter most of them in the hearts of our communities. And thanks to our delegation again, we can invest $350 million a year on roads and bridges to connect communities, spur economic development, and improve the quality of life. A critical project that's connecting communities is I-375 in Detroit. Back in the 1960s, I-375 paved through, paved through two prominent black communities in Detroit. Black Bottom and Paradise Valley. 
displaced 130,000 people, hundreds of small businesses, churches, and thriving community. Voices of black Detroiters were ignored in favor of bulldozers and splitting prosperous neighborhoods and leading to decades of underinvestment. The construction of I-375 was unjust, and it continues to divide the east side of the city from downtown. We have an opportunity to knit those communities back together and create jobs and green space and economic growth. And we're working together to tear down I-375 and replace, replace it with a local road that will be really a part of the community, flanked by small businesses and parks and housing. We want this mile to be an opportunity for local economic growth instead of an obstacle for families and small businesses. And we're getting this done the right way by listening and engaging with the community every step of the way, taking deliberate informed steps so that we get this right. I wanna acknowledge Mayor Duggan's leadership and engagement in this space and acknowledge Warren Evans, our, our, uh, our executive for the county, his leadership and engagement on this, this piece as well. The U.S. Department of Transportation approved our environmental plan earlier this year, which means we're full speed ahead. And I-375 reminds us that while we cannot change our past, we can work harder to build a more just future. And it's a quintessential example of our construction philosophy, which can be seen in a lot of projects that are happening across Michigan. Improvements to Buttle Street to connect downtown Midland to green spaces, local businesses, and the Dow Diamond. And a new roundabout south of Marquette City Center at the intersection of US 41, M28, and Cherry Creek Road to reduce traffic, to improve safety, and facilitate access to local and regional trails. So thanks to partners like Secretary Buttigieg, business owners, developers, and Michiganders, I'm confident we're going to get all of these projects done and we're going to move as quickly as it is humanly possible. And finally, the, an exciting announcement about how we're going to fix our roads and bridges more efficiently and effectively. The executive order that I signed earlier today will improve our permitting process. It will require all relevant state departments and agencies to develop a coordinated permitting process for projects that cost $50 million or more. For qualified projects, this directive will promote transparency by requiring publicly available permitting schedule with clear timelines to be published and prevention of duplication efforts. We'll also make these process improvements without shortchanging any environmental protection or diminishing our important safety standards. And finally, the directive tasks the Michigan Infrastructure Office with creating a new public permitting dashboard so we can track progress and ensure all projects meet those environmental and climate resilience goals. I knew when I had, I knew that I had a riveting announcement to make about permitting and dashboards and procedure to get things done fast. The only place to do it was here at the Mackinac Policy Conference. Today's a great day for infrastructure in Michigan. We're investing in our communities, improving processes, and increasing opportunities for families and small businesses. We're working at the local level, at the state level, and at the federal level to deliver. And I'm proud, as always, to be here with Secretary Buttigieg, members of our congressional delegation who work so hard to get this done, local leaders who are doing legwork on the ground, and countless partners who share our mission. Let's keep working to fix the damn roads, to fix the dams, the bridges, high-speed internet, and make sure that we move Michigan forward. So thank you all for your leadership, and with that, I'm happy to open it up for a few questions for anyone who's up here. Yes, Eric Lloyd. Well, I think you're pointing out uh, an issue that is not just something that we at state government are navigating, but all the businesses that are here, right? The supply chain, the cost of goods, all of the different choke points. You know, we have planned the work and we are working the plan, but we've got to recognize that we're going to have to be somewhat nimble and creative. You know, I was chatting with the secretary earlier, and this is something that I know that they are working at the federal level. I know that our 
director is navigating this as well, so I'm going to invite either one of them to make a few comments on this front, too, if, you, if you'll indulge us. Uh, yeah, I think the governor has it exactly right. This is a real challenge, but it's also one that we can collaborate to address, making sure that we map out the trends that are happening. If we identify that uh, there is a particular uh, piece of uh, uh, a particular level of pressure in a certain part of, of, of the supply chain or uh, one material versus another is there anything we can do to adapt our plans or smooth things out uh, and of course uh, some of this is a um, is, is a little bit circular in that the more good infrastructure investment we do the more uh, fluid goods movement becomes in this country and the less pressure we have on prices in the first place but this is certainly a concern and it's one that we're working closely with the state departments to stay on top of We've not, we've not had that conversation today, um, but I've been very clear. I do think that uh, some sort of a gas tax holiday, sales tax would, could be helpful to people who are struggling. I've been very clear though. You know, uh, I'm not interested in, in you know, theater. I want to give people relief right now. And so uh, the proposals that I've put on the table, we could move fast. We could give people a little bit of relief who are struggling right now. And anyone who shares that goal, they're going to find an eager partner in me. There are a lot of negotiations happening right now, um, not between you and me, but between the legislature and my administration. Obviously, we've got incredible resources that none of us ever anticipated as a result of all the struggle that we've been through. Good management, help from the federal government, we're so grateful for. We've got an opportunity right now if we want to make some of those uh, decisions to give people relief right now. I'm, I'm encouraged and eager to do that. Exactly what that's going to look like is going to have to be a subject of part of the negotiation with the legislature, and that's ongoing. Okay, go ahead. Well, you know, this is a conversation that I think uh, every state needs to have in a way that fits their local funding patterns. It's, it's different from state to state, just as that's different from the federal model. Uh, but look, I think uh, all options are on the table right now for bringing people relief. At the same time, uh, I would add that, uh, you know, there are more direct ways to, uh, and permanent ways, to reduce costs in other categories that families are facing. Uh, the cost of insulin, the cost of prescription drugs, the cost of housing, the cost of child care. Uh, I could go on. And there has been, uh, the, the president has, has uh, made the case for these proposals. There's a lot of support for it in Congress. Uh, if that were to advance, uh, that would be, I think, more lasting and in some ways, uh, you know, more, uh, uh, more immediate uh, than some of the other things that are being kicked around on a temporary basis. I, I wanted to just add on, on gas prices. As one of the sponsors of the, of the federal gas tax housing, I agree with what the governor has said before, that if we're going to do this, it should be done federally. But more importantly than this, I just have to say that as we are looking what is happening right now on gas prices, this is way beyond just what's happening in Ukraine or other kinds of supply chain problems. We have price gouging going on in this country right now. And the last time a gallon or a barrel of oil was at $116 uh, per barrel, which is what's happening right now, I went back and looked, the last time was 2013. Then the price was about $3.50 per gallon. Now it's $4.60 a gallon. There is no rational reason for that going on right now. And I mean, what we are seeing, and Secretary Buttigieg talked about this before, 9,000 leases the, the oil companies have in this country right now where they could be drilling and they choose not to. And there's legislation called use it or lose it. The House of Representatives has passed a very important bill that we are going to be voting on this Senate that gives 
power through executive order to the president to do something about excessive prices. Thank you for the House doing that because we don't control those prices. It's not controlled by government. It's controlled by the oil companies right now. And what we are seeing, unfortunately, I believe, I think colleagues in the House would agree, they are taking advantage of a situation right now that then puts the governor and everybody else into a position of trying to figure out what to do. We always know prices go up after Memorial Day, right? We're all going to the cottage, we know the prices are gonna go up. But this time, it is outrageous what has been happening and the companies taking advantage of this. And I will finally say this, last year, 25 top oil and gas companies made over $250 billion in profits while we were paying through the nose and only going up. And they're doing stock buybacks and CEO pay increases and other things rather than lowering prices. So I very much appreciate the challenge at the state level and we, we all, you know, nobody wants to pay this price. And I will finally just say as somebody who just bought my first electric vehicle, I'm driving by the pump and I won't tell you the motion I'm making when I drive by the pump. <laughs> But, yeah, yeah, I'm going like this, so. <laughs> yes, on that note. <laughs> All right, Thank thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Governor.